Hi, babe. I have something for you. What is it? Just a little something. <laughs> Released in 2003, The Room is famously one of the worst films ever made. On the surface, it's a basic romantic melodrama, but filmmaker Tommy Wiseau constantly trips up the audience with a barrage of bizarre dialogue, bad acting, mystifying plot twists, and obvious continuity errors. In fact, it's so bad that it's kind of an artistic masterpiece. This includes the costumes, which range from confusing to downright hideous. And by looking at where this movie went wrong, we can learn a surprising amount about what other filmmakers do right. Sorry. Hi there, I'm Gavia Baker-Whitelaw and this is Behind the Scenes, where we decode the world of costume design. <laughs> Danny, do you have something else to do? I just like to watch you guys. Watching The Room is a truly jarring experience. You can't help but wonder how a film like this even got made. And this morbid curiosity only grows when you learn more about its legendarily eccentric director. Actor Greg Sestero eventually wrote a memoir called The Disaster Artist, chronicling his experiences befriending Tommy Wiseau and co-starring in The Room. He paints a picture of Wiseau as the ultimate auteur filmmaker, a director who knows exactly what he wants and maintains total creative control. The problem was, Wiseau knew nothing about filmmaking and had no interest in listening to professional advice. He wrote, directed, funded and starred in The Room, surrounded by a cast of inexperienced actors and a production team who were constantly baffled by his creative choices. Their job was to bring his vision to life, even when that vision was downright incompetent or impossible to execute. Like, at one point, he wanted his character to be a vampire with a flying car. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. The Room's costume designer was Safawa Bright Asare, who went on to have a thriving career in the costume department of TV shows like Dexter. Greg Sestero describes her as a decent and conscientious on-set presence, who was given a tiny budget and scoured thrift stores for suitable clothes. In one anecdote, Sestero encapsulates the kind of behaviour she had to work with. He describes Wiseau getting frustrated because she wasn't on set and deciding to choose his character's outfit himself. He probably could not have picked a worse outfit had he been blindfolded an ill-fitting navy blue sport coat over his favourite black tank top and sand-coloured cargo pants, the pockets of which were stuffed with lotion bottles, anti-wrinkling gel, purple scrunchies, hair clips and cash. He looked like an ageing metrosexual commando. This is the outfit Tommy Wiseau wears when he utters one of the weirdest line deliveries in the entire movie. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. To understand why the room looks so weird, we have to remember what the film is meant to be like. It's a contemporary drama starring Wiseau as Johnny, a banker who supports his manipulative girlfriend Lisa, played by Juliette Danielle. Craig Sestero plays Johnny's best friend Mark, who has an affair with Lisa. They are surrounded by a supporting cast of friends in their 20s and 30s. From the get-go, The Room's concept is wildly at odds with its tone and aesthetic. Wiseau loves classic Hollywood dramas like Citizen Kane and Casablanca. One of The Room's most famous lines is actually a reference to James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause. You're tearing me apart! You are tearing me apart, Lisa! Focusing on money, infidelity and toxic relationships, The Room is meant to be a tumultuous drama. In theory, it should resemble something like A Streetcar Named Desire by Tommy Wiseau's favourite playwright, Tennessee Williams. But The Room's writing and direction are obviously appalling and the film's visual style conspires to make us feel like we're watching a sitcom. Oh my god. Hey! Hi. What? 
characters walk in and out of fake looking sets, wearing the kind of blandly trendy clothes that we usually see on sitcom actors. To remind you of what a film like this should look like, consider some other romantic dramas from the early 2000s, Before Sunset, The Time Traveler's Wife, or Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. These films are grounded in reality, with costumes that tell us something about the characters' personalities. Meanwhile in The Room, the main characters often wear costumes that actively undermine their roles. These disorienting messages actually condition us to laugh at the film. Comedy is all about the unexpected, and The Room is basically a long series of accidental punchlines. When something serious happens, it just feels ridiculous. You're right. The computer business is too competitive. Do you want me to order a pizza? Whatever, I don't care. When it comes to inappropriate costumes, Johnny is obviously the worst. He's meant to be a successful banker, and his friends look like yuppies. Yet Wiseau is clearly middle-aged, and looks more like the roadie for a metal band. His stringy, dyed black hair and rumpled suits would never pass the dress code at a high-powered finance job, a setting that audiences would easily recognise from movies like American Psycho. Oh, that's very nice, Lewis. But Johnny's unconvincing costume fits perfectly with the clumsy screenplay, which displays a childish understanding of work and relationships. The Room is built on a foundation of regurgitated ideas about American society, drawing more from pop culture and stereotypes than actual lived experience. Well, tell me about your problems, Johnny. Peter, you always play psychologist with us. Look, I'm just your friend. I'm, I'm just worried about you. For instance, he knows that men tend to bond over sports, but he portrays this by having them throw a football back and forth as an awkward prop, even when they're wearing tuxedos for a party. You guys wanna play some football? In Texas? No, you gotta be kidding. Wizzo wanted to tell a story about a rich man being double-crossed by his gold-digging girlfriend. So he wrote his main character as a banker, but the character doesn't look like a banker because he's played by Tommy Wizzo. And Tommy Wiseau's true nature will shine through no matter what. Ah! This is a big part of why The Room gained a cult following and why The Disaster Artist was adapted into a comedy movie starring James Franco. Wiseau is instantly recognisable, from his fashion sense to his unusual speech patterns. When you see him in person, it's startling how similar he seems to his character in The Room. Okay, well, I don't have time for this. I'm very busy right now. I have to change really quickly and go. Okay, is, is everything all right? Yeah, everything great on my end. We feel like we know him, but he's a notoriously secretive guy. In The Disaster Artist, Greg Sestero talks about Wiseau's bottomless bank account and his lifelong refusal to reveal his age, his nationality, his birth name, or how he made all that money. Born in Eastern Europe, Wiseau moved to the US as an adult and worked various jobs before starting a discount fashion store in the San Francisco Bay Area. According to him, this made enough money to fund his quest to become an actor and filmmaker. But honestly, that's still kind of hard to believe. You don't want to be good. You want to be great. Wow, look at you. It's from Johnny. Anything for my princess. <laughs> the room's most famous outfit is probably Lisa's red dress. Seen through the warped lens of Tommy Wiseau's personal worldview, Lisa represents a collection of sexist ideas about women and relationships. It's hot in here. Do you mind? No. A better movie would trick us into accepting those ideas, but the room is so bad that it accidentally highlights how silly they are. Promiscuous and conniving, Lisa is a selfish vamp with few redeeming features. Yet Mark and Johnny are both obsessed with her. So is Johnny's creepy teenage protege, Denny. 
The red dress is a classic movie trope, highlighting a woman's sex appeal. You'll find it in dozens of movies, illustrated in a great video essay by Catherine Bray at the BBC, linked in the show notes below. The woman in the red dress knows how to make an entrance. How do I look? <gasps> Smallering temptress. But in the room, the red dress is another unintentional punchline. When Johnny gives Lisa a present, she's thrilled to receive what turns out to be a cheap-looking polyester dress. It isn't very flattering, and since Wiseau has no understanding of sexual tension or romance, it's impossible to buy into the idea of Lisa as a dangerous temptress. There is also the obvious fact that Juliette Danielle looks like a normal person, not a movie star. In a more expensive movie from the early 2000s, this character would be played by Jennifer Lopez, Nicole Kidman, or Cameron Diaz. But Juliette Danielle was an aspiring actor who struggled to follow Wiseau's confusing direction while being sexualized to a comical degree. Can I kiss you? You are such a little brat. When fans make fun of the room, they mostly focus on the bad dialogue, clunky acting, and glaring continuity errors. But Danielle also found herself on the receiving end of mean comments about her appearance, purely because she didn't look the way people expect from a sexy blonde love interest. I'm sometimes annoyed by people describing a film as Lynchian, just because it includes a few surreal elements. Very few directors make anything that really resembles the work of David Lynch, even when they're actively trying to copy him. But with Tommy Wiseau, I do see some similarities. He arrived by accident at the kind of unsettling tone David Lynch achieves on purpose. Lynch and Wiseau are both obsessed with Americana, emerging from a similar melting pot of classic Hollywood influences. Both explore the dark sexuality behind the blandness of suburban life, and both keep us on edge with a mixture of drama and surreal comedy. Lynch also loves to use femme fatale characters, adopting or maybe parodying sexist tropes, and he loves to play around with the lowbrow imagery of sitcoms and soap operas. Point, Lynch even made a short horror series inspired by American sitcom tropes. In the series, we see a group of humanoid rabbits wandering around a gloomy house, interrupted frequently by a laugh track. What time is it? <laughs> this combination of the familiar and unexpected is what makes David Lynch's work so disturbing and effective. The same can be said of Tommy Wiseau and The Room. From the screenplay to the acting to the costumes, The Room is an explosion of mixed messages. Its mistakes actually help us appreciate the skill that goes into making a totally average movie, where simple visual cues can really help us understand the story. As a contemporary drama with a simple concept, it should have been easy to find costumes to fit these characters. It takes real talent to mess that up. I think you should leave right now, Mark. Don't spoil it, we were just having fun. Thanks so much for watching Behind the Scenes. Do you love to hate the room as much as we do? What's your favourite movie that's so bad it's kind of good? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a future episode. We'll see you in the next one.